Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 20th, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, and all of our videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories as of March 20th, 2020 are much the same as yesterday. Everybody, unfortunately, is still growing exponentially. Two things I want to point out here. Number one, the United States has really taken off over the last few days. And number two, Canada is still growing roughly at the same rate as everyone else. The percentage of deaths as of March 20th, 2020 were 1.11% in Canada. The percentage of deaths in Germany are 0.34, and they're a lot lower because they're doing much more widespread testing in Germany, and they have a generally younger population. Growth factors for COVID-19 as of March 20th, 2020 were 1.4 in Canada, and roughly, if you look at our growth factors, we continue to slightly edge up. The average growth factors in Canada overall were 1.14, and over the last three days were 1.22, and you can compare that with the other countries listed above. So people are taking notice. California and New York have issued a statewide lockdown. New Jersey, Illinois, and Connecticut will be following suit. Remember, young people can be affected. It's important to stop socializing in groups and take care to protect yourselves and others. So you can think of your body as a battlefield for a war between the coronavirus and the immune system. This is a coronavirus, and these are the elements of your immune system. We have antibodies and cells. The coronavirus enters the body, and your immune system attacks. The issue, though, is this attack and this whole battle is taking place inside your body, which is the battlefield. And if it damages the lungs, the heart, or the liver too much, it can leave you in some trouble. So the stages of a coronavirus infection are as follows. The first stage is a, what we call a viral response phase. It's an early infection, and the symptoms generally include a fever, fatigue, achiness, a dry cough, diarrhea, and a headache. And if you're lucky, it'll stop there, and that'll be the end of it. But in some people, they end up going to stage two, which is the lung phase, where the body mounts a significant inflammatory response. And in this stage, the war is going on in the lower lungs, and you feel shortness of breath. And hopefully we can get things stopped there because you really don't want to get into the next stage, which is called the hyperinflammation stage. And basically what happens there is your body drops a nuclear bomb on the coronavirus. But this results in significant damage to the heart and lungs, shock, and something we call the systemic inflammatory response syndrome. But there's some good news. The good news is the data from China show the actual number of people who die from COVID-19 is around 0.7 to 1%. Now, this is about the same rate as, uh, as found on the uh, Diamond Princess cruise ship. It seems a lot higher in many other countries because they're not testing everyone. They're just testing the really sick people. So you can think roughly of every 100 people who get COVID-19, one will die. Or if you think of the glass as half full, 99 in 100 will live. Here's the graph of the current uh, cases in all of the countries. You can see this pipeline as all these countries continue to grow significantly. The United States has really taken off here. And if you look at the death rate here, what's more concerning is the death rate has really started to spike in the United States, but it's still highest in Italy and Spain. There's been a lot of talk in the media and on the internet about hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19. This is a widely used medication for arthritis and autoimmune diseases. It's a very safe and very well-tolerated medication. Didier Raoult's group from Marseille, France, has done the only study of this. It had small numbers, about 30 uh, patients or so. And not all the patients on hydroxychloroquine did well, but a lot of them did. So the results were encouraging, and larger studies are being conducted. A couple of graphs I want to show you. The first one is the viral detection rate. And you can see when you're, someone's on hydroxychloroquine, the detection of the virus uh, falls, so you can't detect it here, versus if you've not taken anything. And if you add azithromycin, which is a common antibiotic, to the hydroxychloroquine, the viral detection rate seems to fall even further. There's a lot of different medications in development against COVID-19 at the moment. Hydroxychloroquine, I just mentioned, is here. A couple of the other medications I use quite frequently are tocilizumab or cerilumab, but they're going to be used for later stages when someone's in the, the nuclear bomb phase of this disease. And another promising treatment is remdesivir from Gilead. And I know there's been some patients in Canada who've been started on this, and it's also being used in the United States, and there's a phase three clinical trial going on. But why am I worried? Well, folks, I'm really not sure this is going to end until we have a vaccine. 
Because even if we do come out of quarantine, it just takes one case to restart the fire. So what I envision is this bit of a bumpy road where we get over the first hurdle, but then we're gonna have other little bumps along the way. So we all need to do our part to flatten the curve by staying home, staying safe, and saving lives.